Hey everybody, today's video is taking place on the floor because that's the kind of day that we're having. I am going to talk about the pros and cons of the Havanese breed based on my own experience. Again, I'm not a professional by any means in the world of understanding dog breeds, but I do love dogs and we've had a lot of Havanese in our life from the time that I was basically a toddler. So I feel like I've been able to see a lot of variations of personality and traits within the breed and what's pretty consistent and what isn't. So hopefully this will be a helpful video for you if you're deciding between breeds or just interested in learning more about Havanese. So first, let's talk about a pro, because there's a lot of them. A huge pro of Havanese are just their temperament. They are some of the sweetest dogs I've ever met. They're typically very friendly towards strangers and children, and they can be such good family dogs. They love love, they love to be loved, they're very attention motivated. So if you want a dog that is your companion, these guys are companionship animals. It's a great dog for that. Havanese are like the smartest dogs that I've ever met. They pick up on training so fast from a young age and I think they kind of like it. I think they like learning new things. So it's quite easy to gamify training and make them excited to do it. We started training our Havanese pistachio when she was like barely three months old and we started with sit and stay and she got it within like a couple days. It was pretty insane. Obviously you build up all of those things and help them get better and more consistent with it, but Havanese are such fast learners. And now a con. Havanese are very smart. <laughs> this can also be a bad thing. In my experience, they follow patterns very quickly and you have to be very careful about what patterns you're forming. Otherwise they will predict what's about to happen before you even do. So this can become a bad thing with things like the vet. They learn pretty fast, they don't love the vet, and they might have an attitude with the vet. They might also pick up on cues more easily that you're planning to leave the house and feel more anxious in advance because they know you're about to leave. They're just very smart. And that also means they can get into things more easily and they can problem solve their way around barriers that you created. Trust me, they're good escape artists. They're good at finding out how to open containers they shouldn't be opening. They're just very smart. Next, a pro. Havanese are Velcro dogs. You'll probably hear this a lot once you're in Havanese communities, but they're Velcro dogs. They're very loyal to their people and they want to be with their people as much as they can. It is very common if you have a Havanese that it will actually follow you everywhere you go throughout the house. So maybe that could be a con for some people, but I like having a little companion, a little shadow to follow me around the house and it's sort of a nice thing. This also helps with them being quite good off leash from what I've seen. They do want to stay where their people are. So if you have a, you know, a large amount of land and there isn't a fence, like they'll pretty happily take their whole perimeter there as theirs, but they're not going to necessarily want to go gallivant into somebody else's yard because they want to stay where they can see you and feel like you've got their back or that they've got your back. Sometimes they think they're protecting us more than we're protecting them, I think. I've heard this and I've seen this, that female Havanese can be less Velcro-y than the boys. The boys are very clingy. So if you are looking for a little bit more of an independent dog, a female can be good to go with. However, this might also mean that they're not going to be as good off leash. So definitely get to know your dog before you trust them with that type of power. So a con can be that since they're so loyal and Velcro-y, they also are known to get pretty bad separation anxiety. So when they can't be with their people when they want to be, if you're leaving the house, or even when you have a door closed and you're home, you might find that they get very frantic and stressed out about that, which can lead to unwanted behaviors like barking, whining, shredding things, getting into things, just lots of different signs of anxiety, and also just the discomfort of knowing your dog is pretty stressed out. They're a great breed for someone who is home more than the person who has, you know, an eight hour plus shift every day. Now you can have a Havanese with an eight hour shift. I know people who do and they'll be just fine, but I think they really thrive when they can have their people home a little bit more often. If you work from home, if you're retired, you know, it, they're a really great dog to have because they'll just thrive with having your presence around. With separation anxiety, remember you can train around it. And I do have a video on how we were able to train our Havanese girl to not experience separation anxiety that's so prevalent with the breed. So don't take this as a, oh, my dog is doomed. You always have options in how you introduce them to the world and their experience and their patterns and lifestyle. Havanese are pretty snuggly. If you like to have a lap dog, this is a good dog for you. Almost all of the Havanese I've ever met are big cuddlers. They want to sit on a lap. They want to sit on every guest's lap that's in your home and just have their moment. 
my parents' dog, who's a Havanese, is the most clingy and loyal of all the Havanese I've ever met, but he's not a cuddler. So there's exceptions to every one of these rules about the breed. It just sort of depends. Our Havanese got very cuddly after about five months old, I want to say, so sometimes it just takes a while for it to kick in. So some people would say the Havanese breed can be yippy, barky, whatever you want to call it, that they can be vocal, they can be reactive to people passing in front of your window or dogs passing in front of your window, they can just be barking for attention, they can just be a sort of barky breed. This for me is very trainable. Our Havanese doesn't bark very much, so again, depends on the expectations that you're setting from the get-go, as long as you have control over that, if you get your dog as a puppy and things, I think it's pretty easy to train around. But realize that this is considered a little bit more of a vocal breed, as are, I think, a lot of small dog breeds. Havanese are great indoor dogs. <laughs> They're great apartment dogs. They don't need a ton of space, in my experience, to thrive. They will just be really happy with whatever home that they have. I'm not going to say that they are a low energy breed, because they love to play, they're very playful, but they are very content to use whatever space they have to play. They thrive with a couch or something to perch on, they're big perchers. They'll be very comfortable living in the home of somebody who's home a lot. I don't think they're the dog that needs to be walked every day to thrive. Not really the Havanese. A lot of them like walks. Not a requirement. Havanese are like the funniest dog that I've ever met. They're so playful. They will make up games on their own. We have a lot of times that, you know, we've just finished work or something like that and Pistachio obviously wants to play. We're not really feeling like playing and she will just entertain herself and through that entertain us. She will, you know, she loves to just stomp on one of her squeaky balls and watch it slip out from under her paw and shoot across the room and chase after that. And they're just so goofy. If you want a dog that's going to entertain you, it's a good one to get. One thing to note about the Havanese breed is their coat does need a lot of maintenance. They are able to grow very long hair. If you've ever seen a Havanese show dog, you know what I'm talking about. We always keep ours in a puppy cut, which is really freaking cute in my opinion, but they still need to be brushed. They will get mats. Their hair will get in their eyes. Their hair will get in their mouth as it grows out. You just need to be maintaining that coat. You can go see a groomer for this. They know how to take care of all those things, or you can be doing it yourself at home. Lots of video tutorials online for how to trim your Havanese to whatever style that you want, but it's not going to be a dog that, you know, never needs a bath, never needs to be brushed. They should be brushed at least once a week, I think. A great thing about Havanese, one of my favorite things about this breed, is that they do not shed. They're hypoallergenic. So if you have dog allergies, or if you just don't like having animal hair all over your house, this is the dog for you. They don't shed. They don't even smell. I mean, depends what they rolled in that day, I guess. But they don't really smell. They don't drool. They're just like pretty clean dogs. And for having such a beautiful coat that comes in so many different colors, it's really nice that they aren't um, leaving some of it behind when they leave where they've been sitting for a while. Pretty easy to clean up after and not have a house that is just like a dog lives here when you walk through the door. I don't know if this has just been my family's experience with all of our Havanese, but they can have sensitive stomachs. So it can be a challenge sometimes to just figure out what, you know, kibble or food they can eat without barfing later or getting weird digestive upset. Um, right, and same thing goes for treats and other sorts of chews that you might just not be able to be as experimental grabbing things off the shelf to feed them. They might get more upset stomachs after eating something in the yard. Every dog, you know, will upchuck every now and then from what I've seen, but I just think that Havanese can be a little bit more sensitive. So once you find a kibble or snack that they really thrive with, you just stick with it. No biggie. So this pro sort of goes off of how smart Havanese are, but they're pretty easy to potty train for a small breed. I say that because I know a lot of small breeds because they're bred to be small, they also tend to have smaller bladders and just like a harder time being able to hold everything in. But I definitely think you can train a Havanese to be potty trained in under a year. Again, they pick up on patterns very quickly. I think if you can introduce some sort of cue for them, like a bell to hit before they go out the door, those little things help so much. With some exceptions, they're a dog breed that can hold their bladder. They can hold whatever they have in them. They're not so small that it's, you know, beyond control. You just have to sort of build up the expectations of where they're supposed to go. 
So there's my pros and cons. Again, this has been my experience with Havanese, but I think most of these you will see as a trend in the breed. I know lots of Havanese mixes too. Havanese with Poodle, Havanese with Yorkie, and they're just such lovely dogs. So in my book, any dog that has some Havanese in them is a pretty good sign. But there's lots of dog breeds out there. There's lots of dogs that are all sorts of breeds out there that can be a great fit for your home. So just, you know, do what research you can, but realize that every dog is an individual. So I hope this video was helpful and best of luck with whatever dog ends up in your home. I hope the two of you are the best of friends. Thanks for watching.